Now, sustaining that progress is a challenge, and it's not going to be driven only by the federal government. States have an important role to play, and there are some states in this country that are, have done well, and that we should look at what they did. The ABA program in Ondo State, for instance, is a wonderful example, but that has not been replicated in, uh, outside Ondo in the last few years. Okay, um, you, 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 you would agree that um, part of the reasons why we missed the Millennium Development Goals, you know, the achievement of, of these goals, particularly the four and five for us, is that this factor that you mentioned earlier, the dysfunction in our health system, now we are pursuing the sustainable goals. How do we ensure that we are able to at least get to a particular level that we we'll say, okay, it will just take a bit of the time for us to get to the exact position that we should be? So the primary health care remains the basis for our health system. It will take years to build it. And building it is something that has to be done. We have to invest in it over the long term. Not only allocating money, but actually making sure that we have better quality spending of the money that is allocated. But that is only a segment of what will improve the population health outcomes. There are other elements that education, for instance, particularly of girls, that is an important determinant of how women grow, but also how empowered they are, and the choices they make in life as to where to get pregnant, when to get pregnant, and in fact, where to seek for the services. These are also interlinked. There are other elements of transportation, of the infrastructure that have to do with wider governance. So health is intricately linked to national development. You cannot isolate it uh, from that. And the dysfunction that we see in our health system is partly health system specific and technical dysfunction, but there's a much wider dysfunction in our governance systems that is representing itself not only in health, but in education, in youth employment, in economy in general, in security and many other elements. Well, those are complex problems, but we have to look at it with a really um, good understanding and we situate health within that. The SDGs are goals that we have set, they are an aspiration. There's no way we cannot, we can get to, let's say, SDG goal one without dealing with this wider uh, foundational issues in terms of our national development. Health is part of that. And education is part of that. Empowerment of women is part of that. Bringing youth into governance, into development is also part of that. Um, you have mentioned primary health care, which is very, very, very key. Uh, now, the government of the present administration is talking about using 64% um, of, the, of the health budget on the primary health uh, care system. How do we you know, ensure that some of these spendings really get to the core of the heart of the matter and ensure that the people at that level get the best of health care service that they need? Certainly, it's a good start, uh, and I have to uh, commend uh, the current Minister of Health for the effort that he has been putting in this direction in terms of supporting and championing primary health care, in terms of improving immunization. And I think the government of the day is doing its best in that direction. Having said that, it's not just about money. It's about quality of what that money buys. It's about accountability. It's about having the information system so that we track what happens, and it's about tracking even where the mortality is happening and acting on it. It's about quality of care. So money solves only part of the problem. There are other issues that have to do with standards, with capacity of the health workers. So training of the leaders of the system, not only at the highest level, but at the state, at the local government level, that is also an integral part of it. So it's important that we have the money, and I think with the National Health Act, with the Basic Health Services Fund, if it becomes operational, what is much more significant beyond just the money is the quality of spending. Is the leadership behind that? And not only the highest level where we have a good uh, minister of health who is really driving this uh, issue, but we have some national level governments. Look at, again, Ondo and a few other states, like I mentioned Jigar, for instance, where the spending 
did not improve that significantly, but the outcomes improved much more so than any other country, many other states. There are states that have spent much more, but these other states got a lot more in terms of improvement of the health of their people. So the funding is only part of the, 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 the solution. There's this other element of systems, governance, leadership that are also important in terms of solving this complex issue. Mm. And again, back to uh, just recent history. 2009, for instance, when Nigeria made tremendous progress in polio eradication and broke the back of the polio epidemic. That year, there wasn't more money spent compared to the previous year. But the government was able to use the money that was available to use it efficiently and achieve better results. So we need more money for health, but we need more health for the money that is being spent. And accountability is key to that. Information systems is key to that. And that is also... Uh, let's say, extends beyond health sector as well. You, you mentioned uh, eradication of polio just now. Um, at the time that that fight was really on, we understood that there were some parts of the country where women refused to take their children for immunization. So has that improved in any way? And I'm not only talking about the polio vaccine now. I'm talking about other vaccines yes. that babies need so that they can grow past the age of five you know, where we hear is a threshold for their survival. Yes, I think um, as a country, we've done tremendously well when it uh, comes to polio eradication. For years, Nigeria was a laggard. We we're the last country in the continent of Africa to eradicate polio. And for a very long time, we exported the polio virus to other countries in the region and even outside this continent. But when our leaders, both federal, states, local governments, traditional leaders, religious leaders, the media came together and worked hard, expanded the space, improved the execution of the program. We saw polio from 27 states to a situation whereby it was localized to only one state. Polio for two years, there has not been a case of wild polio in Nigeria. That's a tremendous success for this country. But the solution was partly technical and also leadership and governance at the front lines because we used an ultimate institution, the traditional leadership institution, which was trusted in that part of the country where people you trusted that channel. The Sultan at that time, Archbishop uh, Onayakan and many others really came and spoke about it and restored confidence of the people around the vaccine they were being given. Now, the demand for immunization has improved. That is why polio in a large part has gone except for where the security challenges have remained in Borno State. But even that, we believe in the next one year, Nigeria will be certified free of polio. And the last administration, as well as this administration, have played an incredible leadership role. Both the president at the moment, President Muhammad Buhari, but also President Goldberg Jonathan. This is one area where they build on each other's successes, and Nigeria is going to be free of polio. Now, we need to translate that into other things and maternal health, building the primary health care. And I think if we continue to do that, and if both the federal government and the states invest and ensure that those investments are the right ones uh, and the quality of the spending is good, we should see more progress in the years ahead. You mentioned that uh, funding is not everything, it's not just about the money. Um, let's look at the personnel. What is the quality of medical personnel that are coming out of um, Nigerian universities, for instance, who man the hospitals? Yes, uh, thank you. So just uh, on the funding, we spend $117 per person on average in terms of Nigerian health spend. Health outcomes do not compare much with uh, better, it's not better than other countries that spend less than what we do. So there are countries that spend less than what we do per person and achieve better health outcomes. And there are lots of people that spend billions, I mean, millions of dollars in medical tourism abroad. And that's really an important point to take. Doctor, before you answer that question, we need to take a short break.